Hey guys, Hackersploit here. Welcome back to the penetration testing bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, what penetration testing is, the importances. Uh, we're going to be talking about blue teaming and red teaming, the types of pen tests you can uh, you can perform, and finally the various phases of penetration testing. Right. So let's get started with a brief uh, or a very basic introduction to what pen testing is. And I know many of you might already know this, but let me just go through it one more time. So. Penetration testing is the process of simulating an attack on a network or system to evaluate the security posture of the system and identify vulnerabilities that can be exploited. So this is achieved or done by simulating various types of attacks on the target network or host. All right. So essentially what you're trying to do here is you're actually trying to test these vulnerabilities. You're trying to exploit them. Right. So the main objective of any pen test is to identify vulnerabilities and then try and exploit them. And if they can be exploited, you then document how they can be exploited. So you're providing a proof of concept, right? And this will help the company understand their security posture even better. And of course, it'll help them mitigate any of these risks that they're actually facing. All right. So an important thing to note about penetration testing is it requires written permission and authorization from the management or a top down authorization model where you have authorization, you know, right from the from from the top of the uh, the of the management uh, to the bottom. And uh, with that, you, you need to ensure that you have written authorization so that, you know, you can clearly identify and to obviously specify the scope of your assessment, uh, the, ver the, the time frame, etc. So again, the agreement between an organization and the penetration tester should include the following number one, the scope. So what are you testing exactly? Uh, and then finally, the time frame, which is when to test and how long the test will take. Now, th these these two are not all that are uh, in, in the agreement, but just some of the primary fundamentals of what should be agreed on. And these will in the most in most cases will actually uh, help you, uh, you know, get everything nailed down regarding what you should do, what you should test. And then, of course, how long it's going to take and when you can actually perform the test because you know you don't want to perform a penetration test uh, during the day or you know it, it might uh, impact you know uh, the various employees and stuff like that so that's something to take into consideration all right so let's take a look at some of the main importances of performing a penetration test for the company or, or the organization so number one it, it helps you test security controls and the various security policies that you have in place. So if you implement a you know, security policy and you have various security controls, you know, both to do with your digital infrastructure uh, and uh, to a larger extent, your physical infrastructure, you can you know, then get a penetration tester or a red teamer to perform these various tests to actually test how effective they are. Number two is, of course, to identify threats and vulnerabilities facing the digital infrastructure and the, your assets. So, uh, for example, if you have a server, you perform a penetration test on the server. This will help you understand what vulnerabilities and threats your server actually faces. So uh, that, that's very self-explanatory. Number three is very important. Uh, this is usually why many big organizations perform pen tests. Not really the primary reason, but this is uh, this has a lot to do with it. And as you move to becoming a more professional penetration tester, this will really, really start to take shape. So you're talking about compliance and regulation testing and maintenance. So if a company is uh, is accredited or certified with a specific security certification, uh, you, you they, they need to perform regular tests on a yearly basis or uh, on a quarterly basis, depending on the uh, the regulation or the various uh, compliance standards uh, to actually ensure that they are maintaining that standard of security. All right. Uh, and then we move to the fourth one, which is testing security infrastructure like firewalls, uh, web application firewalls, uh, intrusion detection system. So you're primarily trying to test the security infrastructure. Now you're not really targeting the um, you're not really targeting the the various uh, bits of digital infrastructure, but you know your attacks could include that. So you know you're trying to craft different uh, various packets. You're performing encoding to bypass firewalls uh, and intrusion detection systems, uh, all, all all of that type of stuff. Uh, and then of course you have testing new hardware that's been implemented, uh, software that's been introduced into the organization. And of course, the organizational infrastructure, if any, has been changed. So a quick example of this, if you've installed a new firewall or you've set up a new network topology or infrastructure, you need to test this to ensure that you're not dealing with any type of misconfiguration vulnerabilities, any type of inherent vulnerabilities within the hardware or the software. So if you introduce a new type of software package, uh, you know, for your, for, for your employees, you need to test that software and ensure that it does not in any way 
uh, hurt the overall security posture or does not affect uh, the security posture. You know, it could lead to potential vulnerabilities, etc., etc. All right. Um, so let's talk about blue team and red team because I mentioned red team really briefly in the previous slide. So blue team is is essentially your defense team. So this is going to this team is responsible for performing vulnerability assessments, security audits on the company, uh, and the digital infrastructure to identify vulnerabilities and to test the effectiveness of the various security controls that are in place. Uh, they also used to you know to perform or, or to provide an overall uh, you know secure to actually provide the upper management and overall security posture of the company. So their primary objective is to defend against attacks and to predict and prevent future ones. Now, there are various ways they do this. Of course, one of them is monitoring various attacks that they're actually facing, gathering data from those attacks. And then that helps them build an, an idea or build uh, the, the actual uh, attacker or, you know, this will allow them to predict what the attacker will do next or the types of attacks they're facing so that they can put up defense solutions, stuff like that. All right, you then have the red team. So the red team is the offensive team. And uh, this is usually a group of pen testers that, uh, you know, simulate uh, attacks on the assets and the digital infrastructure of an organization to test the overall security posture and to identify weaknesses and vulnerabilities that can be exploited, right? So their job is to simulate uh, an outside attacker or an external attacker and to actually test the entire security uh, posture of the organization. Now, there are ver various ways that this can be set up for them. And of course, that's where we get into the types of penetration tests. So we have black box testing, white box and gray box testing. So they're very, very simple to understand. So with black box testing, the pen testing team, the red team uh, team does not know anything about the uh, infrastructure or does not have any information about the organization's infrastructure, the assets, etc. They essentially just, uh, in essence, given the company name and maybe a website and they start off from there. So it's extremely comprehensive in that they actually have to, you know, perform reconnaissance, they have to perform research on the company's employees, try and find various weaknesses in the public domain. And again, as I've just said right in this slide, the test is used to assess the overall security posture of an organization, you know, from uh, publicly avail available information to misconfigurations and social engineering. And of course, black box testing is used to simulate a real attack scenario and as a result is going to be extremely comprehensive and granular. So. One of the key things that you'll find as you move along is black box testing is going to take much more time and it's going to be much more expensive, but it's much, uh, it's going to be extremely worth it because you're identifying vulnerabilities, uh, misconfigurations, any, any potential threat uh, to, to your organization, you know, from publicly available information, you also test your employees. So it's very, very comprehensive. You then have white box testing, right? So this, in this test, the complete digital infrastructure all information that is required is known to the penetration tester and or the penetration testing team. All right. And this is used by organizations primarily to test specific sections or areas of the organization. So, for example, if they want to test a particular, let's say, a demilitarized zone, they want to test their, uh, their web applications, they want to test their, uh, their network infrastructure, they want to test their various defense solutions they have uh, in, on the company network. Now, it's not really restricted to that, but again, it is also used to perform a complete security audit of the entire organization and, you know, to assess uh, because everything is known to the penetration test. It's quite comprehensive in that the, because the attacker knows uh, or the pen tester knows the, the infrastructure, they can then, you know, perform a very comprehensive test. And, uh, you know, whereas with black box testing, they might miss out on something. That's why uh, black box testing requires a very, very good methodology. And then finally, you have a gray box testing, which involves combining both white and black box testing to simulate attacks from both insiders and outsiders or external threats. So this is uh, is is also very, very interesting because you're trying to, to, to actually have, uh, you know, the best of both worlds in that you're trying to give the attacker vital information that will, you know, will be very helpful to them and will ensure that their the actual test is extremely comprehensive. Whereas, uh, you know, with the, the black, black box test or the involvement of the black box test, you're also trying to get the, the benefits of, of not knowing any, any of the infrastructure and, you know, performing extensive research about the organization or on the organization uh, and, you know, trying to, you know, get or enumerate as much information as possible that, you know, the company of the organization might have missed as well. 
All right, so a key thing to note there is that some knowledge of the digital infrastructure is disclosed, not all. So, you know, re in regards to the white, uh, the white box aspect of gray box testing, they just, they just give the pen testing team just little bits of information that are important or caveats, if, if you will. All right, now we can talk about the pen testing phases. So I'll not really go over this in depth because it's quite self-explanatory. So first of all, you have your um, you have your pre-engagement, right? So your pre your pre-engagement is uh, essentially used to define um, the scope of who you're going to be targeting, uh, and then of course you're going to be talking about the uh, the rules of engagement and so on and so forth, right? So you're trying to to get out of the way all the legal uh, the legal requirements, the documents that needs to be signed, the the scope. So you're obtaining permission. You get permission and then you start setting up the various rules of engagement. You then define a scope and then you sign an agreement uh, and a non-disclosure agreement and then you can finally begin your pen test. So directly after that, you have information gathering, reconnaissance or OSINT. Now there's a lot of uh, confusion with that phase, but you can just call it information gathering. So uh, you, what you're doing here is very simple. You're just trying to g gather as much information about your target. now. Uh, this will involve both passive and active. So you're performing, uh, you, you know, OSINT, and then you're performing scanning to a certain extent, and then you move on to, of course, um, sorry about that. You move on to threat modeling and uh, vulnerability identification. All right. So with threat modeling, you're just trying to uh, you're trying to establish an understanding of what uh, threats. Uh, you know uh, what threats will actually affect the 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 infrastructure or the assets of a company. So um, you're trying to you also you're also trying to build a profile of what the organization is going to be most prone to in terms of attacks. And then of course, uh, when you talk about vulnerability analysis, you're then of course talking about uh, you know providing um, or performing a vulnerability tests or scans on the target to understand. Uh, you know, the various vulnerabilities that hosts network, uh, various uh, areas on the network are facing and of course, uh, various applications. So this will involve, you know, using different uh, vulnerability assessment or scanning tools, uh, you know, both on the host, on the network and application level. And then of course you have exploitation. So exploitation is the actual, I'm not really going to explain that, but you're essentially finally exploiting the various vulnerabilities that you have found. And this could, you know, be, uh, host-based, uh, network-based, uh, irregardless, but you're essentially getting unauthorized access into the network, host, so on and so forth, right? You then have uh, post-exploitation, so you're gaining, in this stage, you're essentially trying to elevate privileges or you're trying to gain information that is sensitive or is important, and um, uh, you're essentially trying to get a foothold into the system, right? So. I had actually had notes here that I'm actually going through and the key areas was that you're trying to get a foothold onto the system or onto the network that you've just exploited. Uh, and then you're finally, uh, you're, you're, uh, the final goal here is to, uh, is to of course then perform uh, you know, you know, re reporting and uh, you know, perform or, or to provide recommendations to the organization regarding what has been done, what can be achieved during post-exploitation. So let's talk about report writing. So uh, the report writing is very, very important because you're essentially uh, trying to, 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 to uh, encapsulate all that you've performed into something that the management uh, and the organization as a whole can understand in that you're providing information regarding what you've done, what vulnerabilities you've exploited and how these can impact the organization and the, the actual business and the, uh, the the financials of the company or the organization. Right now, I'm not going to be covering all the, the report writing in, in much depth here, but as we move along, I'll be covering it as well. So uh, now that we have an understanding of the very spent testing phases, which again, I'll get into much more uh, deeply as we actually enter these phases. So the last thing I want to talk about regarding the method uh, regarding the fundamentals is the various pen testing methodologies available to you so we'll be taking a look at that in the next video and then after that we can then begin with uh, reconnaissance or information gathering so i'll see you there